What would a day of Magic the Gathering be without Amazon making another mistake? In today's video, we'll be discussing the new spoiler cards from Lord of the Rings that were shipped out by accident by Amazon. I think by the end of the video today, we'll get a better understanding of what Chris Cox meant when he said, Lord of the Rings is going to be evergreen. It's going to continue to pay out. Welcome back, everyone. MTG Moxman here. Thanks again for hanging out with me on the channel today. Yes, I know I already did a video today, but I ran home when I saw that Amazon had leaked out 18 magic cards from Lord of the Rings and these are brand new cards we haven't seen. Apparently they shipped out cards they weren't supposed to ship out until November. They shipped them out early and now we get to experience all these cards early. Now that's a big mistake unto itself. I get it. Amazon makes boo-boos like this all the time. That's not what I want to focus on. I know it's a huge mistake and it's magic news but I want you guys to think about another thing. They didn't put all these cards in the regular set. They broke them up and put them into a separate product, almost like they did with epilogue boosters, right? It's just another way of rehashing a product. Instead of epilogue being mixed in with March of the Machines as one product line, they go ahead and they separate it into epilogue boosters and March of the Machine, and we get this weird kind of thing that players didn't really like. But with Lord of the Rings, these new cards you're going to see, they are powerful. They blew my mind. Now that I kind of grasp Commander a little bit more, I'm looking at them going, these are going to be crazy. I understand not all of them are the same power level, and we'll go through those cards during this video. But when you have players who want and desire these cards, and Wizards of the Coast either separates them on purpose, of course they did, or it's a mistake somehow, and they just did this as a fun product, sure, that's what they meant. Either way, they're going to make a lot of money off this, because when players start seeing this, they might be ordering more than players expected. People may not have expected this kind of new power level of card, new exciting cards, something new to talk about in the MTG news world, even with Wilds of Eldraine and, and the Lost Caverns of Ixalan, we've got more Lord of the Rings gear coming out, and players are still excited about what already exists. And this leads us to a whole other realm of what could happen and the financial impact to you, the player at home, going forward. Yes, it's an Amazon leak, but there's a bigger story here about if something like this is successful, they will do it again. They will branch product lines like this out and cut them into smaller chunks, maybe even at a slightly smaller price point that you may find more palatable. Another form of shrinkflation coming your way by the good folks of Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast. But it still doesn't change the fact these cards are awesome looking. So let's take a look at these cards. Let me share what I've seen with you guys and, and let me know what you think in the comments section. I'm sure there's other YouTube content creators already popping this stuff off right now. But I had to get home and share what I think is going on. And it's that financial side. The Amazon thing is a boo-boo. It's a mistake. It's a Yogi Bear moment. But focus on what could happen if it is super successful and these cards breed in a whole new generation of stripped down product lines that are broken into chunks at different price points but keep the money flowing at an ever faster pace. All right, drop some comments in the comment section. Let's take a look at these amazing cards right now. Our first card is Call Forth the Tempest. This is a sorcery and it is three red, five generic. It has Cascade, Cascade. Call Forth the Tempest deals damage to each creature your opponent controls equal to the total mana value of other spells you've cast this turn. This card is going to be epic. Yeah, it costs a lot of mana. It's got a huge mana cost, but amazing. Now, the next card is Nazgul Battle Mace. Five generic mana for an artifact equipment with equip three, it looks like. And it says, equipped creature has menace, death touch, annihilator one. We're talking Eldrazi style. And whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent, put that card onto the battlefield under your control unless its player pays three life. That card is so getting played. It's amazing. Now, the next card's a little hard to read, so bear with me. It says the Witch King Sky Scourge, and it's three generic, one red, and one black for a 5-5 five, five legendary wraith. And it says flying, whenever you attack with one or more wraiths, exile the top X cards of target opponent's library where X is their total... Ah, sorry guys, this is super hard to read your total. I can't read that part. And it also has Undying. Sorry, that one's a little difficult to read, guys. I'm sure better copies will come out. But either way, it's going to be an epic card by the look of your exiling opponent stuff based on your race. And we get down to the bottom, we'll get there. Okay, Mordor on the March. Again, 
three generic, one red, one black sorcery. Exile a creature card from your graveyard to create a token that's a copy of it. It gains haste until end of turn, exile it at the beginning of your next end step. That's not the most powerful card. We've seen cards like this, but it's still a kind of cool idea to have another another type of that card available to put into a commander deck. Now, our next card is Fell Beast of Mordor. Now, this thing is a 3-3 three, three Drake Beast. It's two black and two generic. It says Flying Devour 1, and then it says whenever Fell Beast of Mordor enters the battlefield or attacks, target opponent loses X life and you gain X life where X is the number of plus one, plus one counters on this card. That is insanely powerful. That is crazy. And it only costs four to get out. All right, we've got Minas Morgul, the Dark Fortress, legendary land. It comes into play tapped, which of course I do not like. It only taps for one black, but it's the bottom ability where it says one black, three generic. Put a shadow counter on a target creature. Guys, shadow is like an old school power. For as, okay, for as long as that creature has shadow counter on it, it's a wraith in addition to other types. And of course, creatures with shadow can only block or be blocked by other things that have shadow. So basically it's unblockable, okay? This is a crazy a concept idea to see that we haven't seen around for a long time. I love the idea of that card. And I think it's actually going to see quite a bit of play. People are going to finagle with that card and try to make it work. Now our next set of cards starts with a Boreal Alliance. That is two green plus X. And it says, when a Boreal Alliance enters a battlefield, create an XX green tree folk creature token. Okay. But it also says whenever you attack with one or more elves, they populate. That's right. More population for elves. That's crazy. But it gets worse from here. Galadriel, the light of the Valinor. This is a 3-3 three, three legendary creature elf noble. It is two generic, one green, one white, one blue, and it has alliance. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, choose one that hasn't been chosen this turn. First, you could, you know, you could choose to add three green mana. Then you could put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Then you could scry two and then draw a card or mix and match the order any way you like because it's your creature. That is a crazily powerful card that's going to be going and popping off everywhere. I love it. Now, the next one is Rally the Galadrium, and this is um, one uh, blue, one green, two generic, and it says, create a token that's a copy of a creature you control, and it has Conspire, okay? This is crazy. Okay, now we've also got Galadriel's Dismissal. It's one white. It has a kicker you can pay of one white, two generic. Target creature phases out. If this spell was kicked, each creature target player controls phases out instead. Offensive or defensive, this card has a lot going for it. Now we have the Mists of Lorien. This is a sorcery that is one blue, two generic, that has Replicate. Okay, Replicate for one blue. Now it says return target non-land permanent and each other non-land permanent with the same mana value as the permanent to their owner's hands. Whew, guys... These are really powerful cards. Now we've also got the uh, Galadrium Brigade. Brigade. Uh, Brigade. That's right. I can't speak right. This thing is one green, two generic for a two, two. It kind of reminds me of like old school cards. But it's an elf soldier with squad. That's right. This thing creates copies of itself. And then the middle ability has other elves you control get plus one, plus one. So they start giving all their guys plus one, plus ones. But you can replicate it enough times it's just going to go off as everything's going to be these monster things. Like These things look like they're going to be comparable to slivers at this point. It is insane to think where these cards are going to go. They're just, to me, they're amazing to look at. The art looks good. Wow. I'm really impressed with what these cards are and how Wizards gave them to us. We got one more set to go. The first card here is Narseal Reforged. It is a two casting cost artifact equipment that's legendary. It has equip three and it has a send, but it also has Whenever equipped creature attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. If you have the city's blessing, put two plus one, plus one counters on each creature you control instead. <laughs> These cards are crazy. Then we've got Aragorn, Hornburg Hero. This is a 4-4 four, four legendary human soldier with one white, one green, one red, and one generic. It has attacking creatures you control, have first strike and renown one. Whenever a renowned creature you control deals combat damage to a player, 
double the amount of counters on it. So double the amount of plus one, plus one counters. This thing's going to keep getting bigger and bigger for all your creatures they get renowned. This is going to be nuts. Now, Legolas's Quick Reflexes. This is a one green instant, but it has split second. We haven't seen this thing forever. And split second kind of goes, as long as this spell is on the stack, players can't play spells or activate abilities that aren't mana abilities. So nothing can beat it. It's kind of like the old school interrupt. This thing has to go off. And it says, untap target creature. Until end of turn, it gains hex proof, reach, and whenever this creature becomes tapped, it deals damage equal to its power to one target creature. That is nuts. I love it though. See him like firing down on things. Crazy. Now, Gimli's Reckless Might. One red, three generic enchantment, and it says... Creatures you control have haste. Whenever you attack, if creatures you control have a total power of 8 or greater, target attacking creature you control fights up to one creature you don't control. Not a bad ability, not as powerful as some of the other cards we've seen, but still nice. Isengard Unleashed. This thing is 3 red and 2 generic and it's a sorcery. Damage can't be prevented this turn. If a source you control would deal damage this turn to an opponent or a permanent and opponent controls, it deals triple that much damage. And this thing has flashback. Crazy. Yes, again, the mana cost really red heavy, but just nuts. Rohirrim Chargers. 4-4 four, four Human Knight. 1 white, 1 red, 2 generic. You may exert Rohirrim Chargers as it attacks. That's right, guys. Exert. I. It's crazy. Okay, it says it won't... It, it's, guys, this is crazy to see. It won't untap during your next untap step, okay? Now, whenever you exert a creature, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal an equipment card. Put that card onto the battlefield, attach to that creature, then put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. These cards, to me, just are crazy. I'm getting the feeling that this is what Chris Cox was talking about when he said it's going to be evergreen. By breaking off the set this way and giving us fantastic cards, but branching into a different set, this gives them more money, more revenue generated for the company in a different product line that a lot of players are gonna go along with. They are going to dive into this product. But being financially aware, being financially literate and understanding what the company's doing, you will get to choose if you want to indulge in that product, buy it as a whole, buy it as singles, pay the full price, look for the individual cards. It's being aware that lets you make the choice. Knowing there are options available and knowing that if you wait a certain amount of days, prices go down. That's the information I like to bring to you all each and every day, that financial side. The Amazon thing is very funny, but it's the financial side of things I like to really pay attention to because a company like this will never be kept in check because there's always certain segments of our population of magic gathering players that are gonna buy this stuff. But you out there being aware of it, gives you a little more information, a little more about, yeah, I got to wait, or yeah, I'm going to get that one card, or there's four cards I want. It's just a little more information for you to look through, sift through, and add to your little noggin there, your nugget of information for the day. Anyway, I think it's epic. I can't wait to see what you guys think in the comments section. Thanks again for hanging out on this kind of like bonus video day. I hope you guys enjoyed the content, and thanks again to everyone who's helping me get closer to that 20,000 subscribers. We're, what, 340 subscribers away from getting to 19,000? Thanks again to each and every one of you who's been enjoying the content, subscribing to the channel, and making it happen. Have an awesome day, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey guys, a big shout out and thank you to the fantastic patrons we've got on the channel supporting me each and every day. Because of that amazing Patreon support, YouTube membership member support, uploaded content like this happens each and every day, and sometimes you even get a bonus video. Thanks again to everyone supporting. See you soon. Normally, I would never do this to you guys. It is the Ramble Jamble. Shop smart, shop S smart. But honestly, I still have another video to put together. I don't have any time. I really wanted to get this done. You guys are awesome. Thanks for partaking and enjoying. You're amazing. You know it's amazing. Clean up your rooms, do the laundry, help out at home, wash the dishes, and don't forget to also change you know, the clothes, shower, and all the great stuff we all have to do every day. And do something special for somebody that you really care about. Have an awesome day.